The first few books I tried to write, I basically just picked up a pen or I hit the computer and I started, well, writing. And that was not really successful at all. I mean, it wasn't a complete failure because at least I wrote something and I think that's a good start, but I certainly did not end up with a story. I ended up with some fun scenes. I ended up with some good seeds of a story, maybe. I ended up with some fun characters here and there, but none of this was fully developed. And this is because I was lacking a really important thing. I was lacking a plan, and I don't think I understood that the story is at the center of all good writing. A story is not just random writing. A story is a journey that you take your reader on. So in that journey, you actually need to achieve something, right? A story does things. And we're going to be talking about what the story does, what are some of the purposes of a story. But in any case, for now, you need to know that a story is a journey that you take your reader on. And if you drop your reader along the way, if you lose them, get them lost, they're going to be very, very disappointed. They're going to feel that you have failed in your role as storyteller. And one of the big tenets of my method for successfully writing a book, successfully marketing a book, successfully doing pretty much just about anything, is to put success in your GPS. Yeah, I know, love this because it kind of goes with that whole journey image that I'm trying to push forward right here. But basically, the idea behind this is that if you don't know the destination, if you don't know the address, how in the world are you supposed to get there? A GPS is really great because once you plug in the address, you get a series of steps to get there. And that's the thing that I'm trying to help you to learn to do for yourself is to, first of all, remember to always have your destination address, which is the goal of your story, and then always learn how to break that down into steps because that is one of the things that is going to make this whole book writing thing eminently figure outable as opposed to confusing and frustrating. I know that some of you are hugely opposed to outlining on principle. And even though I sometimes feel like I'm a, on a one woman mission to change that, and in fact, you will probably want to go check out, if you didn't hear it yet, my podcast episode on outlining for people who hate to outline. But even if I don't succeed in converting you to the wonderful thing that is the outline, I believe that using this wonderful tool called the story spine is going to help you in significant ways to help you on track with your story, no matter what your genre is. And speaking of genres, I think it's important to know what your genre is, and we're going to be talking about that in a further episode. So make sure that you subscribe if you haven't done so already, because that's going to help you to get that episode right in your inbox as soon as it's ready. And before we jump in to talking about this wonderful, small, but mighty tool that is the story spine, I want to break through a potential objection that you may be formulating in that smart noggin of yours. Some of you are going to say, oh, using the story spine is going to mean a formulaic plot. It's going to be way too straight, like a good spine. It's going to mean no surprises. And to this, I say, no, the story spine is a foundation. It's the thing that holds things together. But once you have the story spine, there's nothing that says that you can't start doing yoga with it, baby. And I'll explain to you a little bit later on in this episode how you can do that, how you can tweak this story spine and make your story into everything that you want it to be. So today we're going to be talking about what a good story does, what the story spine is, what the elements of the story spine are, how we use those, what they mean. And also then we're going to be talking about how we expand on it and how we can use our story spine for more than just writing our story. So this is a really exciting episode for anyone who is thinking about writing or who's started writing and is a little stuck, feels like their story is lacking that oomph or lacking that purpose. This is going to get you back on track. This is, think of this like a chiropractor for your story. I'm going to get your story all aligned like it needs 
to be. If you're a writer dreaming of becoming a successful author, join me, writing coach Karenna Akavane, on the How to Be an Author podcast, your weekly source for writing information, inspiration, and motivation. I'm so happy that you're with me today on this episode of How to Be an Author. It's so important to talk about what a story needs to do. A story does things. It has a purpose. So whether that purpose is to amuse, to entertain, to bring an emotional payoff to the reader, it has a purpose, right? So think about what your story should do. I think it's really good to think about this in a much more holistic overall sense. What is my story going to do? What do I want it to be like? How does it fit within my overall writing career? What is this going to be? You know, what, what are my goals for it? All of that good stuff. It's important to think about that. So once you know what you want your story to do, what its purpose is, you must know that stories have several non-negotiable ingredients. The first thing a story has is that it definitely has a plot. And a plot means that things happen kind of in a logical way, or at least with some causality. A plot means that your story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And we'll be talking more about what those things entail. I know that sometimes we talk about these things and it sounds obvious. And then when it comes time to actually write these things, we get a little bit stuck. And the story spine will definitely help you to see what each of these things is and how it works. A story also has conflict and resolution. And you would think as well, oh, that's obvious. But honestly, I don't think many of us really think about this fully. It's important to realize that your story must have conflict to create character growth and to force action in your characters, to force things to happen. And the resolution is more than just an ending. It's an ending that ties things up in a way that's satisfying for your reader. So that's really, really crucial. We need to know what all of these elements are, what some of the conflicts will be, how some of the resolutions will kind of shape how this story is told. And many times a story is going to have a theme. And a lot of writers get really stuck on this where they're like, oh my God, how do I express my theme? And this is something I say that might be a little bit different than a lot of writing coaches or instructors will tell you how to do, is that I think that the theme is something that you kind of will look at your story towards the end and go, oh, wait a second, I'm seeing a theme here. And then you can go back and you can strengthen that theme. So if you don't feel that your story has a massively strong theme, as long as it has a purpose at this point, I think you're doing a okay. Okay, so what is the story spine? I know it sounds like you're like, oh, a story spine. It's it's straight. It's got vertebrae. Um, a little bit. I think a story spine is kind of a straight line that is made up of scenes. The scenes are kind of the vertebrae and each one does its job in holding this whole thing up and making it work. The story spine is a technique that was devised by an improvisational theater dude named Ken Adams. And Ken Adams wrote a book called How to Improvise a Full-Length Play, The Art of Spontaneous Theater. Now, if you've been here for a while or if you've been watching my TikToks or joining me in my writing group, or even if you've uh, had me as a writing coach already, I think that you probably have realized that I love to use these different techniques that don't strictly belong in novel writing per se. I I'll love to talk about techniques from screenwriting. I use techniques from uh, improv. I'll use techniques from even marketing and things like that to have us writing stories that actually really engage the reader in novel ways and also to make things easier for you. I love to come up with kind of these methods that are going to be these hacks for novel writing and they're not or even for screenplay writing and hacks are not cheating. Just because you're making things easier for yourself does not mean that you're not a real writer. That is so important for you to know. And I mentioned screenwriting techniques. If you missed our Save the Cat episode here on the How to Be an Author podcast, you will definitely want to check it out because it's really a good one. But basically, this story spine is really, for me, a very simple tool that helps 
writers to break through the most fundamental writer's block, which is that block of the blank page, the block that comes when you really have a seed of an idea where you're like, I've got kind of an idea for a story, but it's more of a premise and not quite a plot yet. This is going to help you to expand your simple premise of, I want to write about a girl who meets a vampire, and then you expand it into a plot. So here are the elements of this story spine. And oh, by the way, something I need to mention before I jump into the elements of the story spine is that, for example, if you see these Pixar movies that are super, super popular, um, they just have these raving fans. The reason Pixar movies are so popular is because they really use these tenets of good storytelling to their full effect. And, you know, again, it's a simple structure, but they tell it well. They take each element in the story spine and they figure it out in a way that those elements are as strong as they can be. And I think that works really well. So a fun little exercise that I think that you could do if you want to expand on this whole podcast, if you want to use this as a writing prompt, I would say challenge yourself to take this story spine that I'm about to tell you about and use it to come up with about 10 different story spine ideas. And you can keep those in a notebook. And whenever you feel stuck or whenever you want to start a book or something, you can use those as a writing prompt for yourself. And I just think it's a really great creativity exercise that is going to make you feel good about your ability to come up with viable stories. And you can play this game with your friends as well. This is a great party game. I know it's super nerdy, but it's a great party game for writers or creatives. Do the story spine. Basically, get around in a circle and each one of you just add upon each element of the story spine. So you can start with the initial situation and then you can go around the circle and you can add on these different layers. Okay, so let's talk about the elements of the story spine. Fundamentally, there are a few parts to this. There are seven parts to it, but you can expand on those parts. So the story spine goes, once upon a time, there was blank. Every day, blank. One day, blank. Because of that, blank. Because of that, blank. And you might have a few more of these. Until finally, blank. And since then, every day, blank. You're like, wow, thanks. Fill in the blanks. Thanks a lot, writing coach. What does this mean? Don't you worry. I've got you. We're going to go through these elements right now. So the once upon a time there was blank. This is kind of a huge part. It's it's just a short little phrase, but actually it's got a lot of different elements to it. And I want to address each one in turn. So this little thing, once upon a time, this is the time frame. This is the setting. This is the character, right? So this is the initial kind of situation. Who are we dealing with and where are they? I think that's great. We're going to have future episodes on each of these elements, but for now, just know that each one of these should be really specific and really compelling. The setting, for example, needs to be a place that's unique, that's vivid, that fosters growth and change in the character, but that can also create obstacles for them. And when I'm talking about obstacles, I mean, it can be the people in the setting. It can be natural elements. It can be any number of things. In terms of who your character is, this is the main character we're talking about. And of course, any story gets other side characters. Well, not any story, but some do. Uh, Many stories get an antagonist. Many stories will have a sidekick. But for now, we're talking about your main character. And your main character is different from any other characters. I know that there's a trend right now to talk about main character energy, blah, blah, blah. And um, and in a way, this is true. There is such a thing as main character energy because your main character is going to be an in-depth, developed, relatable, flawed figure who's going to be able to grow and change throughout this story. And this growth and change in your story is called a character arc. We're also going to be touching on this in a future episode. Uh, And also, I'm very, very pleased to announce that my course is going to be opening super soon because it's going to have a lot on this whole method of creating a character arc and a really compelling character. Um, But your character is going to be changing and they're going to be changing through actions that they make. 
So yeah, a lot of people in life, things happen to them and then they freeze and then they don't do anything. And it's fair enough for your character to do this at the beginning of your story, but that's your initial baseline situation. Like maybe your character is doing this, right? Your character is faced with some things, but they're not really acting. They're just kind of sitting there and hoping that somebody will solve their problems for them or they're hoping that things will pass. And what we do is that we're going to take this baseline situation. We're going to say every day blank. That's the initial baseline situation. We're going to make that situation a little bit unsatisfactory in some way, right? But there's also a certain level of comfort in this situation. So we've got our character who's a little unhappy, but they're like, yeah, but I can maybe also keep sitting around. But here's the difference between a main character and any other character or somebody who's not worthy of being a main character. The difference is your main character is going to act. And why are they going to suddenly act? Well, it's not through some kind of weird decision that they make in a vortex or in some kind of a, you know, blank thing where they go, oh, nothing happened, but all of a sudden I'm going to decide to change how I'm acting. No, they decide to change because there's been an inciting incident. The inciting incident is the part in the story spine where we say one day, okay, one day something happens. And usually that something is an accident or it's something caused by an outside force. Because here's the thing, even if your character is vaguely uncomfortable in their baseline situation, they've pretty much decided that they're just going to stick around, right? Until something changes. And this something changes is the inciting incident. This is the thing that happens that is going to force your character to get out of their unhappy comfort zone. This is something your character would never really choose to do on their own. But now that this thing has happened, we've got a real before and after. We've got something where, man, I wish we could just stay the same or stay how we are. But now that this thing has happened and that thing can be um, you know, your dog dies, uh, you flunk the test, a meteorite hits, any of these things. Because this thing happened, now there's a before and after, and now I'm forced into some tough decisions as the main character. So that's the one day is the inciting incident. Now we're going to move on to the because of that. I like this because. Because shows you that there is causality. This is really important because think about a spine. Your spine is attached by the spinal cord. It's all tied together. And the same goes for the elements in your story spine. There's causality that links all of them, right? So because of the inciting incident, now there's an adventure that needs to start. The character is either going to go somewhere different or start doing things differently in the same place. But because of the inciting incident, they're forced to start doing things. This is really, really important. One of the big mistakes I made when I first started writing my books is that I would just write a bunch of scenes that are happening and the characters there are kind of hanging out and things are happening. And some of these scenes are entertaining, but really, where are they going? That's right. They're driving in circles because I haven't put my destination in the GPS. So, you know, maybe we're seeing some interesting things along the way, but we're never going to get to our destination. And that's what happens when you don't have causality, right? There's a snowball effect that happens. You're going to want to think of a bunch of things that have to be done to get to the goal. You're also going to want to think of obstacles that pop up because these obstacles are those pain pinching points that are going to force action and decisions. And that is a growth opportunity for your main character. So all of this falls under the second because of that in your story spine. This is a bunch of different things that your character has to decide on, these different obstacles that that fall along their way, the decisions they make, and kind of the fallout from each one of those decisions. Now we come to the part in the story spine that is until finally. Until finally is what I think of as the climax of your story. This is where everything comes to a head. And, you know, it's really funny because when I was studying creative writing, when I was studying storytelling, you always hear about this climax thing. And I think it's kind of elusive. I always have a hard time realizing, you know, what exactly is the climax in your story? You know, how do you define what that is? And I'm going to tell you here, like, this is something, it's a learning process. And I think we keep 
you know, working until we can really put our finger on what exactly this climax is. People are thinking that, oh, this is the most exciting part in the story. And that puts a lot of pressure on you. I think instead of looking at it as the most exciting part in the story, look at it as this is where the decision or actions that your character has made are setting a resolution into motion. This is where tough decisions have been made, plans have been put together and into action, and this is where the result starts happening. Now comes the final part uh, in this story spine, and this is, and every day after that. This is your ending. This is the new situation. This is your resolution. This is that satisfying thing of like, oh, and here what's, here's what's going on with each of the main characters because of all of the hard work of our main character who's done the things and who's kind of seen this story, seen this whole purpose to its end to its conclusion. And your ending can be a happy ending or a sad ending, but definitely it should be a satisfying ending in that it ties up most of the loose ends. It answers the questions. It kind of fulfills the promise that you established at the beginning of your story with your hook and with your initial situations. Okay, so this story is fine. Now you've got, once you've written out your story spine, you probably have a short paragraph. And that short paragraph is going to tell you pretty much, you know, the basic, basic elements of your story. And you probably want an example uh, at this point, I'll bet, um, because it's easy to talk about these things theoretically, but it's a lot harder to see how they work in the real world. So let's try to plug in some elements uh, into the story spine. We're going to kind of improvise a story for ourselves, okay? So uh, once upon a time, uh, we're going to say once upon a time, this is, let's say, uh, in California in the 2000s, uh, there was a Let's say there was a gardener. There's a woman who's a gardener and uh, she, let's say her name's Nancy and she is recently divorced and she is trying to find a garden that she can volunteer in. Okay. Every day she's kind of sad because she's gardening at home. She feels alone. She's doing all these things until one day she sees an ad that says that this uh, really well-known garden uh, that has a dark back history, they're looking for a head gardener and Nancy needs money. So because of that, she decides she's going to take the job. So because of that, she ends up at this garden. And uh, because of that, she starts to meet these mysterious people and she encounters a plot to uh, create poison uh, in this garden with the rare plants. And so she needs to, because of that, go on this discovery journey to figure out who is doing this and why, until finally she discovers that the person who's making the poison is her boss, who she really thought was a wonderful person. And she needs to defeat her boss in an epic battle in the garden. And because she did this, and every day after that, she is now responsible for this beautiful garden, and she has a whole new rich life with lots of friends who come to visit her there. Okay, I know this example was a little bit lame, but I mean, it's kind of fun. I don't know. We can round this out. But here's the, the important thing, actually. You are going to round this out. You are going to break all of this into scenes because you need to expand on your story spine. So you know how sometimes you get a compressed disc? That's not good. You need space between things, but you need things to be connected in the right way. So break each part of your story into scenes. I mentioned that your story spine, the middle parts about the because of this, because of that, that's the causality. That's the things that happen and that each one of those has an effect. So make sure you break everything down into what needs to happen and those things are scenes. Each scene must be crucial for the story. It must have things like character growth. It must have a purpose of precipitating decisions or creating a conflict or resulting in growth or finding out things. All of this is really, really important. And once you have all of those scenes written out, oops, I just tricked you into making an outline of sorts and you can use that to start writing your story. In terms of what you can use this story spine for other than writing your story, 
You can use it for your synopsis. I always find it so hard to write a synopsis for your book. And this story spine is something of an elevator pitch because if you hone it the right way, you can make it be really vivid and really great. And this kind of gives you a one or two minute framework for describing what happens in your story, what it's about, and why it's important. So I think that make sure you keep your story spine in a good place, but also your story spine is going to grow and change. You can be tweaking elements all the time, just as you can use your story spine for course correction. I say it's important to keep looking at your story spine because it's something of that address you've put into your GPS. It's something of this is what my basic story is and why I think it's good and why I think it's complete. So keep looking at it and being like, okay, and is what I'm writing reflecting this story spine accurately? Or do I need to tweak things either in my story or in my story spine? I just think it's such a fun thing to have and to be like, okay, this is my framework. And now how do I tell the story differently? So I was talking about doing yoga with your story spine. And one of the ways that you do yoga with your story spine is you play with the order of how you tell things. So you can choose to reveal the initial situation in a flashback. You don't have to have the initial situation at the beginning of your book. Or you can choose to have these different things that happen go in a different order. You can have all kinds of different ways of expressing this story spine. So you can definitely tweak the timeline by playing with temporality, playing with parallel timelines, flashbacks, flash forwards, foreshadowing, you know, doing all of these things that make your story a little bit more compelling. You can start in the middle of the story or you can start at the end and work your way back. There endless ways that you can do this. And this is going to depend on your whole talent as a storyteller. So that's it. I hope that this helped. This is a short but sweet episode, just like the story spine itself. And I hope this is going to help you to start to have those fundamental building blocks for your story. And next week, we're going to be talking about how to create kind of tone and mood and how to decide what your genre is, because that's something that I think you should really know early on in the process. If you have any pressing writing related questions or would like to be featured on the How to Be an Author podcast, please feel free to reach out on my website, creativeandwritingcoach.com.